You're listening to the Play Like a Girl podcast, episode number 18. You play ball like a girl! I'm Nikki B with Play Like a Girl, made just for female athletes. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Play Like a Girl podcast. I'm your host, Nikki V. Here at Play Like a Girl, we aim to encourage more confidence in young women who play sports and give them the necessary tools and advice to have an amazing career in sports and beyond. If you are a young woman who plays sports and lives an active lifestyle, or you know one of these young women, I am so excited you are here. Each week, we will either bring you a guest in the sports world or have a roundtable discussion of the many taboo and important topics in the world of female sports. Are you with me? Let's change the game. Before we dive into this episode, I want to share the review of the week. We want to start sharing these reviews, so be sure to leave a review with your name and IG handle to get a shout out. This week's review comes from Big Megs, who says, this is a great podcast for an female athlete or just girls in general. It's fun to hear from girls with all sorts of sports backgrounds share their stories. Thank you, Big Megs, for this awesome review. All right, Plague listeners, this week's podcast is a little different because I was able to sit down with the woman who inspired me to play golf thanks to Adidas Golf. We had an amazing day. We did a photo shoot, and then afterward, I got to sit down and have this interview with her, and it was an absolute dream. I've even mentioned her on this podcast before, and honestly, who knows where my career would be today if it weren't for her. Natalie Golpus is a professional golfer who competed on the LPGA Tour for 18 years and is still currently competing. She has also had a successful career outside of golf as a host for Fox Sports and an appearance on Celebrity Apprentice and many, many more experiences in media. In this interview, Natalie and I chat about how she competed on the boys golf team in high school, her path to turning pro, her LPGA major win, her back injuries, and more. I also found out why what she thinks is her biggest accomplishment of her career, and it's not what you may think. Let's dive on in and give a warm plug welcome to my golf icon, Natalie Golpis. All right, everyone. I am so excited for this interview. It's like my dream interview. My name's Nikki B. I am co-founder of For Her Sports and host of the Play Like a Girl podcast. And I'm here with a golf icon, Natalie Golpa. She inspired so many young female golfers, including myself. So thank you so much, Natalie. For doing You're this. welcome. Thank yes. you for the intro. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. You don't even know. So we had a fun day today. We did have a really fun day. Yes, we had so much fun, a uh, fun photo shoot with Adidas. Can't wait to see all the photos and videos. But you probably don't know. We go way back. I don't think you know. And I'm really excited to show this. Oh, <laughs> look at you. So this oh my moment. Oh gosh, look at that Kings yes. hat. So I uh, right? We're both Sacramento Kings fans, so I don't think you uh, understand. So this I hope one, you're zooming in on yes, this. Yes. So hold it really, really <laughs> still, because this is so freaking cute. So this was at the Long Strong's, Long's Drugs Challenge um, in Auburn, I believe, at the Ridge. I was 11 years old, and this was—I'm not kidding you. This is the moment I decided I wanted to play golf. Really? Yes. Oh, that's so awesome. Yes. So, and I think um, it was because Ugh. you were like someone I could identify with. You're a Sacramento girl. I'm a Sacramento girl. You know, you're an only child. I'm an only child. We're both like tall, blonde girls. And I was like, oh my gosh, she is me. I'm her. Like, I want to play golf. And you were like a cute girl on the golf course because before meeting you, I had gone to the golf course with my dad, but I just thought of golf as like daddy sport with his friends. Like, I had never really seen any cute girls on the golf course. So then when I met you in this moment, I was like, this is the moment like dad i'm gonna play golf oh my gosh that's so cool and look yes. now today we did a shoot for adidas together my wearing great. wearing the same cute yes. outfits and yes. we were twinning today we were <laughs> twinning and it's so funny how things come full circle and thank you so much to adidas for doing this because because of you like i wore adidas everything i'm not kidding you i would copy your outfits all the time like my, my everyone knows i actually had a friend um, that I was friends with in middle school and she messaged me and she was like, oh my gosh I remember how much you looked up to her, to her in middle school wow. and I'm like, how cool is that? Like everyone knew I was so obsessed So thank you so much for playing so then, golf and inspiring So then me. how was today then? Did I, did oh my I gosh. meet your expectations? Because that's more. a lot of pressure now. I'm glad you didn't say that in the no, beginning. No, <laughs> more than meet my expectations. This was like yeah. a dream for me But 
you not only inspired me, I know you inspired a lot of like all the other junior golfers that I played with. And so what I think is super cool about you is when you were in high school, you actually played on the boys team at Granite Bay. I so did. talk about that. What was it like playing on the boys team? Well, in Sacramento at that time, there were no girls mm -hmm. teams. And so I was really fortunate that Granite Bay allowed me to even try out to mm -hmm. be on the boys team. And it turned out to be a huge blessing in disguise because I had to play from the tips. Yeah. And I also had to learn how to, how to have really thick skin and mm -hmm. hold my own again against the boys and it's something that I was able to carry on into college and into professional golf is having to play back because that's mm -hmm. what the distance that we played on tour and I loved it. I was not only the only girl on the team but the only girl in the area and I wouldn't have had it any other way. Yeah and I think you totally inspired I mean the Sacramento region there's some pretty good female golfers now and Granite Bay is one of the top high school um, for female golf so I think it's just so cool what you did and what you inspired um, and I kind of have a similar story like I had to play with the boys growing up um, the the friends I my friends that I play with on the high school team they didn't really play during the summer so all summer long I had to play with the boys from the tip like you said thick skin they yeah. would just everything they say to each other they say to the girls they don't hold anything back and there's nothing better than beating the boys and out driving them because yes. it just makes them so Bad. Oh yeah, they I used to it. love that. It used to be my motivating factor was to not only like did I want to achieve my own goals, but just to like make them squirm. <laughs> oh yeah, I love it. And you said that you carried that into your college career. So you played at University of Arizona mm -hmm. for one season and then decided to turn pro, right? Yes, yeah. correct. And I um, I had a great great time at Arizona, and then I got an opportunity to play um, in the U.S. Open that year and. After that, I had a chance. I signed my first contract with mm -hmm. Adidas right, mm -hmm. right away. I was 19 uh, years old, and then I went to LPGA Tour School yeah. and continued on from there. So you made that decision based on playing in the U.S. Open and, and getting the contract with Adidas. What I were just, like, the pros and cons of turning pro? Those are really good questions. So the, <laughs> the pros were I was signing a deal with Adidas, mm -hmm. which was a huge, a huge pro, um, and I also signed a deal with TaylorMade. Mm -hmm. And there was these, I had this window of opportunity that I didn't know if it was going to be there. I was playing mm -hmm. great golf. Um, golf was looking for you know all these kind of new like fresh young faces mm -hmm. and it was really frowned upon then to turn pro e early mm -hmm. uh, like it is now and so the best advice that I ever got was to put the first hundred thousand dollars in an account and put it college and so if I ever needed it I, I could always go back to school and it was something that I carried forward I still have an account that's called college it's worth a little no bit way. more than the hundred thousand but mm -hmm. at least it allowed me to go out on tour and not have to mm -hmm have to worry about it. That's amazing. Great advice. But I do, I do, I mean, even though I left school early and that mm -hmm. was a good decision for me, it's not the best decision for everybody. Right. Right. Yeah. Like I, I, I did never expected that I was going to turn pro early. I always wanted to get a college degree and mm -hmm. have that to fall back on. But having that perfect timing for me was something that I knew that I could fall back on. Right. Definitely. And so you had, you were on tour for six seasons and it took you six seasons to get your first win, but it was a major. How cool, it was the Evian Championship. I mean, how, what was that experience like and what did you change in order to get that win on tour? So it was interesting being in the mix of it because I was getting that great label of when was I gonna win a tournament and if I was ever gonna win a tournament. But meanwhile, while that was happening, I was a top 10 player in the world. Mm -hmm. So the criticism that I got, I really didn't care about mm -hmm. because my entire goal was just to keep giving myself a chance to win and playing on Solheim Cups. And I always wanted to win tournaments, but I had a bunch of seconds. I had lost in playoffs and had kept being in the mix. So it was just a matter of time. But when I first turned pro, I started working with Butch Harmon. Mm. And it did take a couple years to make some changes to, for me to be more consistent. I have a very unorthodox swing. I had never had a lesson before I went to Butch. Wow. So the difference was really just being patient and mm -hmm. trying to look at what I could improve in my golf game. Yeah. And it wasn't anything more than trying to change a, a quirky mm -hmm. habit or mm -hmm. trying to change my momentum or routines or really worrying about it. I didn't, I look back on the time when I didn't win and I didn't really worry about it. Right. I, I wasn't worried about it. I was just worried about being the best player I could be, being in contention and just, you know, it happened in a, a pretty organic way. Yeah, that's a great mindset to have. And I think it's hard, you know, when you're grinding and grinding and you like really want that win. But I think you had such a positive attitude you're like I'm top 10 and I'm like doing great and I'll get it it'll come it'll be there so that's absolutely amazing um, and what was it like you mentioned Solheim Cup what was it like playing on Sol Solheim Cup teams so I just finished my 18th season on tour mm -hmm. and the three Solheim Cups I was on were the single greatest oh. weeks on tour by far playing on a team representing my country mm -hmm. uh, representing the teammates and playing for Nancy Lopez and Betsy King mm -hmm. it just 
playing for players that I respect and alongside in the team at atmosphere. You mm -hmm. see it as a Ryder Cup or a Solheim Cup. You mm -hmm. feel it, a President's Cup. Like, it has a different energy, and the highs are higher, and the lows are lower, and they were just the best weeks of my career. Yeah, you feel it all together, and it's kind of like being back in high school and college again, right? Definitely. Yeah. And being an individual sport, I think it means even more to mm -hmm. for us to when you, when you come together and you get to play. Um, together as a team and just representing your country is just such a great honor. Mm -hmm. I love that. And so let's talk a little bit too about your back injuries because I know you had to have, I think, multiple surgeries. What was that like and how do you keep going and just keep the positive attitude that you have? Because I think a lot of professional athletes and even college athletes, they face injury and I think it's so hard to keep that positive attitude. So how did you do it and just keep fighting and coming back to the game of golf? It's a, it's a great question. Mm -hmm. So my first back surgery was in 2009, which I had already been on tour for quite a few years. and. The first one that I had, I just thought, athletes get injured. Mm -hmm. This was my injury. Mm -hmm. It was going to be something. And after I had my first surgery, and then I came back from it, and I wasn't the same. Mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't practice as much. I couldn't get the training that I needed to get. I just, I wasn't, I wasn't the same. So I had another surgery to see if I could clean up um, the first surgery. And that one really didn't work as well either. So mm -hmm. for a couple of years, I was just struggling to figure out whether or not I was going to play or I was mm -hmm. going to retire because I wasn't playing well and I wasn't having fun. And I was just trying to play and trying to get more out of my body. And I was going to retire. Mm -hmm. And it was 2011. And then I had a laser surgery at Laser mm -hmm. Spine Institute. And that was life changing for mm -hmm. me because it's not only that I could, was I able to come back and play on tour, but I could play golf without pain. I could do, I, if, People know me as somebody that loves the game and I love corporate golf mm -hmm. and I love junior golf and I love playing golf with my friends. But the reason is, is because it got taken away from me. Mm -hmm. There were many years when I couldn't play golf without pain or I could only play or practice just enough to compete. And so to be able to have that second chance to be able to play. And uh, I had another surgery a year ago. Um, again, I had been able to play, but I wanted to practice a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So I cleaned up another area of my back. Again, I've been doing the same motion mm -hmm. for a lot of years. And um, I feel great. Last year I played seven events and yeah. eight events maybe. And this year I'm going to play more. Honestly, when Tiger started playing more events, mm -hmm. I thought he's playing more. <laughs> my back's not as bad as his. I'm going to keep playing. And um, people ask me more about my back now because mm -hmm. back surgery has been more of a, a topic of, right. of conversation. Mm -hmm. But all athletes have injuries. Mm -hmm. And so it, when you do get injured, it's really like taking where you are and figuring out where you want to be. But I feel really, really grateful that I can yeah. still play. And even just hitting balls with you know, you today mm -hmm. or being able to go play a few holes. Right. It's something I couldn't do for a lot of years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that, taking it with gratitude and just being grateful for what you can do. Um, and yeah, it's true, a lot of athletes go through injury, so just keeping that positive mindset. But, and you mentioned too, like corporate events, working with juniors, you're so great with people. And I love that about you. Like I remember when I met you, you were so gracious. My dad actually told me um, before I came here, when he gave me the photo, he said that he took the picture and he, it, he knew it didn't come out. And so he asked you to retake it again. And you said, no problem. So like you were, I just, and I watch you, you like shake hands with everyone that you come into contact you. with. You're just very gracious with everyone. Um, like where do you learn that? And why do you think that's so important to just be a people person um, and make everyone in the room feel noticed? Well, I mean, naturally, I, I do love people, mm -hmm. and uh, I feel very grateful for what the game has given me. Mm -hmm. And um, hearing a story like what you just said, mm -hmm. I remember the first impact of players that had the impact on me. I remember meeting John Daly and mm -hmm. meeting Phil Mickelson <laughs> and getting something from Chris Cheddar and mm -hmm. Nancy Lopez. And when they gave me a golf ball or signed something mm -hmm. or spent time with me, it, it made my whole year. Yeah. And so I always wanted to be able to, it's such an honor to be able to sign an autograph mm -hmm. or to be able to um, impact somebody in a positive way. Mm -hmm. And then early on, um, Peter Jacobson has been a, a great mentor mm -hmm. and Butch Harmon and of course, you know, my family mm -hmm. and Arnold. I remember one time signing a, an autograph just at a big event where there's thousands of people. Mm -hmm. We were in Fresno at the Save Mart mm -hmm. shootout. I'd probably signed 10,000 autographs that day. It's like a big local crowd. Mm -hmm. And Arnold Palmer came back to me with a golf ball and said, what is this? And I said, oh man, it did not look like a good signature. I said, that's my signature. He's like, really? I can't read it. Like anybody can scribble on that. Like, don't you ever sign another golf ball or wow. anything where I can't read your name. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I swear I've not, not like mm -hmm. shortcutted a signature, but anytime somebody says, oh, you have a really nice mm -hmm. signature, I can actually read it. I think mm -hmm. of Arnold and, you that's know, just amazing. those players 
along the way. Yeah. So I, I mean, thank you for what you said, but golf has given me, mm -hmm. and the people in the game, like you know now, because you're more mm -hmm. and more around mm -hmm. different players, and golf is such a special game because it's a community, mm -hmm. and um, it doesn't matter if you're a, you know, a junior player or you're a tour player, like we all love this same game mm -hmm. and are challenged by it, and it has a great effect on us. Oh, totally. And we both want to grow the game. I mean, we have seen like the opportunities that golf has presented us. And so I know you do a lot with bringing women into the game. So what are you doing now? And I know you've talked about some of the clinics that you do and you have, I know your website. So what, what are the, some of the things that you're doing to get more people into the game in general? A lot of things. <laughs> I, I think anything that you're doing, even like what we did today, yeah. even having great partners, mm -hmm. you know, having Adidas and having them want to be involved in women's sports, mm -hmm. having them want to, you know, empower the next generation and to get more. Because I love the game, I want women to mm -hmm. enjoy the game. I, I know it's intimidating for women when you first play. And so creating an environment that's like a safe environment for them to learn and to have fun or to be able to play with their kids or even just helping them figure out how they can play nine holes with their husband mm -hmm. without you know, the husband not wanting to play with them again, right. just little things like that. I do a lot of corporate women's retreats mm -hmm. and corporate um, women's outings. And so just anything that we do that continues to talk about why the game is great and why mm -hmm. it's great for women. Um, so many contracts, so many deals get done on the golf mm -hmm. course, women that are trying to grow their business, um, you know, create great relationships mm -hmm. in their company or networking. It's a great place for them. And mm -hmm. my ultimate favorite thing with golf is golf doesn't discriminate. Mm -hmm. I can play golf with you. Mm -hmm. You can play golf with your mom. You can yep. play golf with your kids. It doesn't discriminate against age, race, socioeconomics, what country, what language mm -hmm. you play. You can anybody can play golf mm -hmm. and I think that's something that's really really special yeah me too and it like any skill level like you said any age anyone can play together and I I absolutely love that about the game as well um, so moving back to like you as a professional athlete I want to know what is the best advice that you would give to um, not just young female golfers but just any athlete in general to set goals mm -hmm. I don't think there's any supplement for setting long-term goals, mm -hmm. short-term goals, daily goals, and really mapping out, okay, I want to play golf in college. Mm -hmm. So what does that look like? Where do I actually want to go? What does that look like in the next year? Mm -hmm. What does it look like in the next month? What do I have to do? What are the three things I have to do mm -hmm. every day? I mm -hmm. naturally got really lucky with my parents because they were huge goal setters and helped me reverse engineer mm -hmm. how to set goals. And it's something that has always been incredibly beneficial for me both on and off the golf course is setting goals but for golfers specifically and junior golfers my best advice is play a lot of tournaments mm -hmm. tons of competition like any tournament that you can enter your kids in any tournament that you know if you're a junior player you can play mm -hmm. in there's no substitute for competition you learn about where your game is you learn about where your head is you learn how to overcome adversity and you just can't get that from practice. Right. You, you really get great feedback when you compete and uh, you grow as a golfer mm -hmm. and as a person by competing. Yeah, that's so true. I love the goal setting because it's so true. You set a big goal. I recently heard about this, really setting that big goal and then reversing it from there. So like what you have to like backtrack and like figure out what those goals are, mm -hmm. you know, five months from now, two months from now, one month from now. And then like you said, what do I need to do today to get yeah. to there? And if there's, go if there's parts of your goal you don't know, you're probably not the first person that's mm -hmm. tried to achieve the same goal. Mm -hmm. There's so many resources mm -hmm. out there Google. to try to figure out that <laughs> that plan or asking mm -hmm. somebody, right. right? Like I I remember asking Annika earlier in my career mm -hmm. or asking, um, you know, Peter Jacobson the first time that I had a surgery, how am I gonna come back from this? Like, mm -hmm. what do I actually have to do? How mm -hmm. much can I practice? Like, you know, there's so many resources out there that you can try to use to to figure out how to, how to get there. Mm -hmm. And you have, speaking of career, you've had a very successful career. What has been the favorite, your most favorite part about your golf career and also your media career? Because you do a lot um, within golf, but on the media side, and I love that about you. You're very well-rounded. What's kind of your favorite thing that you have done so far? Um, my number one favorite thing has been opening up my own Boys and Girls Club. Aww. In 2012, mm -hmm. I opened up the Nally Gobus Boys and Girls Club in Las Vegas, and it's by far the greatest accomplishment um, that the kids that are there, the impact that I'll have on their life. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with golf and mm -hmm. they just, it's the greatest joy that I get is being able to go back there, being able to raise money and awareness, get be able to take them to the golf course. Any interactions with the Boys and Girls Clubs has been the most profound impact on, on my life. And it started off in, in Sacramento. Yeah. Boys and Girls Clubs were big in Sacramento and I, 
my dream was that if I ever made it and I ever turned mm -hmm. professional, I would open up my own Boys and Girls Club. And it, it took time to do it, but it's been my single greatest joy. Mm -hmm. um, from a media standpoint, what's been my favorite? Having my own uh, show on the Golf Channel mm -hmm. was really fun because I think people got to see what it was like on tour, not yep. just my own personality, but mm -hmm. got to see our tour, mm -hmm. like how cool everybody is right. and how fun and how normal I think it's your everyone's always a little bit surprised like oh my gosh they're really great like they like to fish or they like mm -hmm. sports or yeah they're just as silly as I am or you kind of get to see people's personality and now with the show uh, that I have on Fox mm -hmm. um, 18 holes it's it's a great it's a great way to not only just showcase different properties in golf but just different personalities right. of golf mm -hmm. and I, everybody plays golf oh yeah we were just talking Everyone. about I did a, a bit with uh, Charles Barkley with these, mm -hmm. just so funny, and mm -hmm. it's just there's everybody plays golf. Everyone it's plays so golf, cool. and I think it's really like it's something that can connect everyone. Like you said, everyone plays golf or as leads knows something about golf, so it's a it's a cool way to connect everyone. Um, definitely watched your show, by the way, loved it. Thank um, you. But final question: um, This is something I always ask on the podcast, and I love this question. What does playing like a girl mean to you? Playing like a girl to me means being confident, being mm -hmm. a girl. Is just being able to, you know, be be you, mm -hmm. whether that's whatever that is. I love it. Well, thank you so much for this interview. Thank you, Adidas, for putting this together. Thank you, Natalie. This thank is you. Dream that come true fun. for me. Thank so you. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Thank you. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys! This interview was an absolute dream for me, and I really hope you enjoyed listening to it as much as I enjoyed just spending this time with Natalie. It was just such a cool experience to interview the, one of my biggest idols. She was the reason why I got into golf. And like I said, who knows what career I would have today if it weren't for her. I probably wouldn't even be into golf if it weren't for her. So thank you so much, Natalie. And thank you to Adidas Golf for um, can, doing this interview for us. So everyone, make sure to share this episode with a friend who you think will enjoy this podcast. I'd love to hear your feedback and thoughts on this episode, so head to iTunes to leave a review. You can also send any questions or topics you'd like us to cover by sending us a DM on Instagram, at playlikeagirlmp. We want to know what you want to hear. Before you go, screenshot this episode and tag us at playlikeagirlmp so we know you're listening alongside us. Thank you so much for listening to episode 18 of Play Like a Girl. We hope you come back for more. Once again, I'm Nikki B, and remember to never stop playing like a girl.